Hi guys, Mrs. A here. Today we're going to be looking at two different functions and discussing the different characteristics that functions can have so that we can um, better understand how they work and how we can sketch their graphs. So the first one I want to look at here is uh, f at x equals x minus 2 squared minus 4. This is the equation for a quadratic function. So in other words, it's a parabola. Uh, I'm going to sketch it first based on the transformations that this function has here um, from the original parent function uh, f at x equals x squared. So our parent function is f at x equals x squared for the parabola. We know that that's an open up parabola with a vertex at the origin, 0, 0. This new function here has no stretch or compression on it because there's no a or k value, uh, but it does have two shifts. So here, this uh, value inside of the function, inside the brackets, means that we're going to move the original parent function right to, and then the value out here, that's a c value, means we're going to move it down four. Uh, you may also know this as vertex form, so the vertex is at 2 and negative 4, so that achieves the same thing. So I'm going to start by doing my uh, vertex at 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. My scale here is just 1 on the, um, on the graph. And then this, since it has no stretch or compression, the uh, step pattern on the parabola is just the same as the x squared, so I'm going to go over 1 up one, I'm gonna go over two and up four, like this, and then uh, it's symmetrical, so I'll do the same thing on the other side, and that's what our parabola is gonna look like, something like this. Okay, it's just a sketch, but that's pretty much what our uh, f at x looks like here. Okay, it's open up parabola, no stretches, no compressions. So now let's talk about the domain and the range for this function. Uh, it's a parabola, and so uh, parabolas, by definition, they, they're going to extend over all the real values left and all the real values right. So the x values for this function will be all the x values on that number line here because that end behavior is going to go this way and that one's going to go that way and there are no breaks in there. So the domain for this parabola is going to be uh, x is an element of the reals with no restrictions. Or if you want to write an interval notation, we say from negative infinity to positive infinity. And that's it. Now, when we discuss the range, that is all of the y values that the function takes on, that's a little different now because this parabola, since it's open up, the y values start here, where x is, sorry, where y is negative four, and then they go up infinitely, but they're never going to go below that y equals negative 4. So the range has a restriction on it. It will be y is an element of the reals such that y is greater than or equal to negative 4. And I put the equal on there because the vertex does cross and touch that negative 4 value for the y. Again, if we want to write interval notation, we will write uh, our square bracket to indicate that we're equal to the negative 4 and then it goes to positive infinity for the right bound there. Okay, let's move on to the intervals of increase and decrease. If I follow this function with my pencil here and I trace it from left to right, as I trace that function, my y values are decreasing all the way until the vertex. So that's the decreasing interval from negative infinity all the way until x equals 2 on that vertex. And then afterwards, as I continue tracing the function here, now my y values are increasing. So my interval of increase will be from 2 to positive infinity. So let's indicate that. If we want to do it in our uh, set notation, because we're more comfortable with that, we'll say the interval of increase is when x is greater than 2, or in interval notation, from 2 to 
to positive infinity. And we do put a round bracket on the two because technically when x equals two right at the vertex, the function is neither increasing nor decreasing there. So we should put a round bracket to indicate that. And then for the interval of decrease, that's going to be when x is less than two or in interval notation from negative infinity to positive two, again with my round bracket to show that the two is not included. So it goes all the way up to two, but not including the two. Okay, moving on to discontinuities or asymptotes. We're dealing with a parabola here, so we don't um, have any breaks or asymptotes in this case. So this particular function is continuous over the entire domain and we don't have to deal with any um, asymptotes. So we'll just write continuous there. Okay, let's go on to the zeros. Uh, for zeros, this is the same as uh, x-intercepts. So we want to look, uh, on our sketch, it's clear where our two x-intercepts are. But if we wanted to do it algebraically, we can also do that. So algebraically, to find out where our zeros are, we plug in zero for f and x, or for the y value. So I'm going to go back to that original equation and plug in zero for my f and x. And then this function was given to us in vertex form. I'm going to expand and then I'm going to factor so that I can get my x-intercepts. So when I expand this out, x minus 2 times x minus 2 minus 4, we get x squared minus 4x. And then we can factor this, and when we factor it, we get x times x minus 4. And so the x-intercepts are 0, so x equals 0, and from this factor, x equals 4. And let's see if that matches our sketch. You see at x equals 0 and at x equals 4, we had our x-intercepts, so that works. Okay, let's go down to y-intercepts. To find the, the y-intercepts, we sub in 0 for x. So if we do f at 0, we have 0 minus 2 squared and then minus 4. This is negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 equals 0. So this occurs when y equals 0. And again, if we look at our sketch, there's the y-intercept when y equals 0. Perfect. So let's do our last uh, category here, the end behaviors. So when we're doing end behaviors, looking at the sketch that we have, we want to know what happens to the y values as x approaches negative infinity and as x approaches positive infinity. So let's do the negative infinity first. As x approaches negative infinity, what's happening to those y values? They're going to positive infinity. And on the other side, as x approaches positive infinity, what's happening to your y values? They're also approaching positive infinity. So our two end behaviors for this parabola, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And then the other side, as x approaches positive infinity, y also approaches positive infinity. And that's because we have an open up parabola. Okay, let's move on to our second function. Now here we have a, a reciprocal function, 3 over x. Um, in this case, this uh, is a stretched version of the parent function, that is 1 over x. So here's the parent function. That 3 is what we call the a value, so it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So we're going to think about the parent function that we have here. It's that hyperbola, the two-part hyperbola, with asymptotes on the x and the uh, sorry on the x and the y-axis, and this is going to be stretched a little bit vertically from that parent function. So uh, to help you see this, I think I'm just going to sketch in my. I should really be using a ruler here, but I didn't get it out, so I apologize. But there's my. Um, vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and there's my horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, 
if, um, if we had any shifts here on this function, then those asymptotes would move with the function. But we don't have any shifts, it's just that one stretch. So let's do a few points to help us get that general curve here. If I sub in x equals one, I get three over one, which is three, and I get a point there. And if I sub in uh, x equals two, I get three over two, and that's about there. And if I sub in x equals three, I get one, and that's about there. And so you can see how that curve is forming, and it's going to do this kind of a thing, approaching each asymptote. And then on the other side, if I do x equals negative one, I get negative three there. And if I do x equals negative two, I get three over two, negative three over two, which is there. And if I sub in negative three, I get negative one, which is there. And so again, you see the curve for this hyperbola going this way and then going this way, approaching each of the asymptotes. That's good enough for our sketch here today. So we can visualize this. Okay, so let's move on to the features now. Um, the first domain we're looking at all of the x values that the function takes on. So look at what's happening here. Horizontally, this hyperbola is touching all of the x values, except it's getting very, very close to x equals zero, but never touching it since it's an asymptote there. So our domain has a restriction on it. It's going to be all of the real values when x is not equal to zero. Or, if we want to write this in interval notation, it's a little trickier. We want to do this interval to the left of the asymptote, and then we want to do this interval to the right of the asymptote. So we're going to do from negative infinity to zero. Notice my round bracket because it doesn't include the zero. And, again, from zero to positive infinity, and that's a round bracket because it doesn't include the zero. Now look at the range. So we're looking at all of the y values, all the vertical values here. Again, all of the y values are going to be in the function except for y equals zero because of the horizontal asymptote. So we have a similar situation in the range. y is an element of the reals such that y cannot be equal to zero. Or in interval notation, we break it up into the two intervals from negative infinity to zero, not including zero, and from zero to positive infinity, again, not including the zero. Okay, let's look at the intervals of increase and decrease. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. From left to right, I'm going to trace that function. And as I trace that function, what's happening to my y values? They are decreasing, decreasing, and they're gonna to continue to decrease infinitely small here. So that's an interval of decrease from negative infinity to zero, not including the zero. And then I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to do it again. Trace my function. And as I do that, again, my y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I have another interval of decrease here. There are no increases in this function. So intervals of increase, we'll write none. And then for our intervals of decrease, we have two. Right here, to the left of the x equals zero, and right here to the right of x equals zero. If you write that in set notation, you'll write when x is less than zero and when x is greater than zero, or in interval notation, which is how we would typically write this, from negative infinity to zero and from zero to positive infinity. And again, the zero is not included because it doesn't ever touch the uh, asymptotes there. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, continuity. As we trace the function, I had to lift my pencil up to continue tracing the function over here. So this function is discontinuous. It's not one continuous curve or line. So it's a discontinuous function. Let's write that down, discontinuous. And it's discontinuous at that vertical asymptote, which is at x equals zero, because that's where the break and the lift in my pencil occurs. So this is discontinuous at x equals zero due to the vertical 
asymptote. Okay. It also has a horizontal, uh, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, but when we do uh, discontinuity, we always look at the x values. We're looking over the domain, okay? But if we wanted to also indicate there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero as well. Okay, let's go on to the zero. So the zeros, again, are x-intercepts. Um, looking back at our function, notice how we have that um, horizontal asymptote there at y equals zero. So this function is never going to have any um, x-intercepts because it doesn't cross that axis there. So let's, oops, sorry, here we go. We write none since y equals zero is not on the domain. And again, let's look at the y-intercepts now. And here we have another intercept, uh, sorry, asymptote on the y-axis where x equals zero. So this function is never going to have any y-intercepts. So this is kind of a unique case. So again, we have none since x equals zero is not on the domain. Oh, I need to go back. I made a little error there. Here, I should have put in the range. Y equals zero is not in the range. Pardon me. Okay, that's better. All right, and finally, our end behavior. So go back to our sketch. We're looking at when x approaches negative infinity and when x approaches positive infinity, what's happening to the y values. So on the left side, as x approaches negative infinity, our y values are getting very, very, very close to zero. Never touching zero, but that's what they're approaching. They're approaching zero. And on the other side, as x approaches positive infinity, again, our y values are getting very, very, very close to zero. Never touching, but approaching zero. Let's write that down. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches zero. And as x approaches positive infinity, y also approaches zero. And the format we write this is very important. We need to make sure that we're writing these statements properly to communicate our work. So there we have many, fun uh, many of the characteristics of functions. Uh, we didn't discuss uh, the symmetry of the functions here, whether they're even or odd or neither. Um, please go to my other video about even and odd functions to learn about that. Uh, but this covers uh, many characteristics here, and I think that's a good overview for functions. And let's, of course, remind ourselves that they are, in fact, functions because they pass that vertical line test, meaning every x value has only one corresponding y value. All right, thanks for watching. Mrs. A loves math.